the earth spears part two um part two we did with discussing the earth's water so this is part two of the video uh, of the earth spears let's get down to it okay so when we talk about bodies of salt water um that those are made up of the oceans so the oceans are these huge bodies of salt water um they make up the majority of the earth's surface so and there are five oceans so um, I think when I was in school, that's just when they started having five oceans. And just taking a look at the cursor, here we go. It used to be four. Uh, it's the Pacific Ocean. You can see that the Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean. It is by far the largest ocean on the planet. Uh, the Pacific Ocean takes up more space than all of the rest of all of the land on the planet Earth. So the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Arctic Ocean, the Southern Ocean, and the Indian Ocean. So once again, we have the Pacific Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean, the Arctic Ocean, the Southern Ocean, and the Indian Ocean. Now, 97% of the Earth's water is made up of the oceans. And the oceans are just huge, continuous bodies of water. And we have the five oceans again, are the Pacific, the Atlantic, the Indian, the Arctic, and the Southern Ocean. Now, seas, gulfs, and, and bays, these are also um, other bodies of salt water that are surrounded by land so they are not oceans but they are bodies of salt water and they're surrounded by land we are here in south louisiana we're really familiar with um gulfs because of the gulf of mexico and if you take a look at this graphic it is a graphic of the gulf of mexico this is the southern part of the united states and part of mexico and as you can see this salt water the gulf of mexico is surrounded it's on three sides by land this graphic is of the Baltic Sea, and you see that the Baltic Sea is surrounded on all sides by land. So, seas, gulfs, and bays, they are, once again, bodies of salt water. They're smaller bodies of salt water than the oceans, and they are typically enclosed by land. And some examples of them are the Mediterranean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the process of turning ocean water to drinking water, this is something that we have people have tried to do since the beginning of time. Because I don't know if you guys have ever gone swimming in the ocean or have tasted ocean water is very salty and you cannot drink it. Um, so the process of changing salt water to water that we as people can drink is called desalination. So it's desalination. Uh, that is the process of turning ocean water into fresh water. It is a very expensive process and it is popular in Southwest Asia and North Africa because the water is fresh water is very scarce in those regions of the world the bad part of desalination is that it takes a lot of salt water to make up very little fresh water so it takes a lot of salt water and just taking a look at this map it is of the graphic of the world and it breaks down the world um, based on the amount of water that is available to you whether or not a country has water scarcity fresh water scarcity and it also further breaks it down as to whether or not um, what causes that freshwater scarcity? Is it natural or is it economic? And we'll take a look at the more prosperous countries of the world. You'll see the more prosperous regions, South America, the United States, Canada, Europe, Australia. These are all countries that have little or no water scarcity. When you take a look at more of the third world of developing countries, Central America, we see Mexico. Uh, you see some parts of uh, some other Central America, uh, Africa. The Middle East, parts of Asia that are struggling. You see that one thing these regions have in common is that there is physical water scarcity. Now, there's physical water scarcity, and also in the in the, um, when, when it comes to Africa, there's also economic water scarcity. Now, bodies of fresh water. When we talk about fresh water, that's water that we as people can drink. And only about 3% of the Earth's total water supply, only about 3% of the water that on the planet Earth is uh, actually fresh water. The majority of it is found in glaciers. And this is an example of glaciers. These are just huge um, ice, huge pieces of ice that are frozen around Antarctica, in the Arctic, and lakes. Lakes are something that we're familiar with, like Lake Pontchartrain or um, any of the other lakes around here. And lakes are bodies of water, but these they are bodies of water that are completely set, surrounded by land. They are different from seas and bays and gullies, though, and, and um, seas, bays, and gulfs, because lakes are made of fresh water, 
seas, bays, and gulfs are composed of salt water. Now, streams and rivers. Streams and rivers, these are just flowing. This is just flowing water. Uh, rivers are larger streams. Rivers are larger than streams. So the Mississippi River is a river. It's a large flowing um, large flowing body of, of, of fresh water. Streams are much smaller. Then we go down to groundwater. And groundwater, these are, this is fresh water that lies beneath the earth's surface. And it supplies things like wells and springs. So if any of your grandparents or anything or in family land, they have a well, that comes from underground water. Okay. And aquifer is just underground rock. Um, it's an underground rock layer, and it's made up with water. That brings us to the water cycle. And what this graphic is, it just show it. I like this graphic because it summarizes what goes on with the water cycle, and just kind of briefly going into it. Uh, the water cycle is the name given to the movement of water from a gas state to a solid state and back to the gas state again. So the given definition of it, though, is the name given to um, to the movement of water from oceans to the air to the ground and back to the oceans again. So from a gas state to a solid state, back to a gas again. Uh, and it'll show you really quickly. Really quickly, I'll show you um, in condensation. This is water in the solid state. It flows down to the water, to the ground. And from the ground, the water seeps into the ocean. And the heat from the sun will cause the water to boil and evaporate and turn into steam. And once it turns into steam, it will then, um, once enough water, gas is turned into steam and in the clouds, it will be, clouds will become heavy and condensation will occur again. And the water vapors, um, and we'll have rain again. So evaporation, evaporation is just the process of when gas or when liquid water turns into water vapor. So, and that's when it's heated normally by the sun. But we also, when you boil water, when you see the water becoming a uh, steam, the water that you boil becomes steams, that is evaporation. So once again, evaporation is the process of liquid water turning into vapor or gas when heated by the sun. Condensation is the exact opposite of evaporation. Uh, of evaporation. It is the process of water vapor turning into liquid uh, when warm air cools. So condensation is the opposite of evaporation. And precipitation, that is just the moisture in the air that falls to the earth as rain, sleet, or snow. So precipitation is actually the raindrops and snow flurries and all those things that we feel. That is with the solid water. This uh, graphic is an example of condensation. Whenever you guys, you'll see like whenever you take some cold water and it'll take some water and you put ice in the, in the, I make ice water and you'll see water forming along the edge of the, of the, of the glass. That is condensation that is occurring. That is the cold from the glass or the cold from the ice is turning the water vapor in the air to a solid form. So that's where those water bubbles come from. And this is an example of precipitation. This graphic shows precipitation, and that is just rain and snow falling to the, falling from um, falling from the clouds. That brings us to the external forces of change. We've discussed the water cycle and precipitation and all that good stuff. Uh, so now we're discussing the external forces of change. So when we discuss external forces of change, we mean things like wind and water, and the way that they act to change the Earth's surface. There are two primary forces of change we will focus on one is weathering and the next one is erosion so let's get into weathering what weathering is it is just the process of water when it seeps into rocks it seeps into rocks it seeps into land and it destroys the rocks because it'll seep into the rock and once it becomes cold the water will expand and destroy the rock and this is pretty much this is exactly okay there's the cursor this is exactly of what this um, graphic shows. It shows the water seeping into the rock and also once it, um, it becomes cold the water will expand because that is what water does in the cold. It expands and destroys the rock. And just kind of giving it to you guys just the formal definition is that weathering is the process that breaks down rocks on the earth's surface into smaller pieces. There are two different types of weathering. The first is, is physical weathering. That occurs when we're looking at, uh, that's what this shows. It occurs when large pieces of rock are broken down into smaller pieces by water seeping into the pores. And chemical weathering occurs when 
uh, the chemical makeup of rocks or metals or certain objects have been changed due to weather. Okay. And these are just two examples. These tombstones are an example of the fa of chemical weather. And you'll see that at one point in time, or maybe you will not see it, but at one point in time, these tombstones were not this color. But due to the chemicals in the air and the chemicals in the rain and the elements that have actually um, constantly beat on these tombstones, they've changed them from a stone to actually to the composition of it from stone to limestone. This is an example of physical weathering. You can see that this has been destroyed, Looks appears to be been destroyed. This rock has been destroyed from the inside out. And that is just where the rain and water and precipitation have gotten inside of a, a physical object, it seeped inside of it. And then once the weather became cold, the water expanded and destroyed it from the inside. Now erosion is the next time kind of we'll study. Uh, erosion is the wearing away of the Earth's surface by wind, glaciers, and moving water. It's just wearing away the earth's surface by wind, uh, glaciers, and, and moving water. Now, wind erosion, it involves wearing away or wearing down the earth's surface using the wind. Uh, glacial erosion, these, these occur when glaciers uh, move across the earth and they pick up rocks and soil in their paths and they destroy the earth or they wear down the earth in that way. And water erosion, it's, it occurs when rivers or other fast-moving water wears away the rock in the soil. This occurs, this is actually the most significant form of erosion. It's the most significant cause of, the, of erosion. It occurs pretty often. Uh, this graphic is an example of wind erosion, of the wind moving soil and dust from one place to another. This is an example of glacial erosion, where you see the glacier is moving, the ice is on top, and that the, the fact that the glacier is actually floating and moving as it's floating, it brings dirt and sediment with it and this last one is an example of the most significant form of erosion which is water erosion it occurs quite often in rivers whenever there's a flood on one part of the mississippi river sometimes it will actually change directions because of so much water that is an example of erosion this is an example one of the physical erosion this is stream this is another example of physical erosion this is another um, these are all appear to be caused by rivers changing stream. This is an example of weathering. So we see the weathering. You can tell that the chemical composition of these um, rocks, they changed. This is another example. This is probably more wind erosion because you can see where these rocks have been worn down. And this is another example of um, wind erosion because you can tell how the columns have been worn down and how they're no longer um, they no longer pretty much resemble anything not sure which one this is out there I say uh, teacher may not know this one this kind of looks like wind erosion a little bit if anything I don't know we have to figure that out uh, the end make sure that you answer any questions or anything at the end of your notes guide highlight the answers or highlight the answers to your learning targets and see you tomorrow have a great day